it's probably annoying when people say this in podcasts and interviews, but I, I always want to refer you to what I said in in a in a, in a panel back in in Lisbon in 2018 because I think I, I I I'm still proud of this. It's probably quite silly to be proud of such a thing, but it was like mid 2018. If I got my timeline right, and I've said the the problem with you know systems like Monero and Zcash is that you can have bugs which aren't really like just crappy code bugs, and they aren't really like oh, the system's entirely broken, but they're sort of somewhere in between, you know, somewhere in between like the academic and the code that people actually run. Something can go wrong. And the problem with systems like Zcash is because of the obfuscation, um, it means that nobody can know that something has gone wrong. And, um, you know, the, the reason I'm saying, I'm proud of saying that is because about six months later, it turned out that Zcash, that exact thing had happened in Zcash six months before I'd said it. It happened like a year before they announced it, which is kind of amazing that they took a year before they decided to uh, spread this information to the world. Um, something like that anyway. Um, and, but the, you know, the other thing I remember, I remember that, 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 that chat we had on that panel. Cause one of the other things I said was like, the problem here is that like it's the absolute fundamental principle of a blockchain, like the DNA of a blockchain is public verifiability. Um, and, you know, it's easy for an academic cryptographer to, to, to say, scoff at my point of view and say, oh, doesn't matter. You know, we, this is mathematically sound. You know, for example, a, a crude example is well, not crude, but a typical example is confidential transactions where, you know, you use actual mathematics to prove that, that, that the sums add up, even though you can't see the numbers. Right. And that's that's true. So you can say, oh, so this is still publicly verified, right? But it's, it's subtly or maybe not subtly different between an absolutely plain uh, base layer and um, and uh, one which is still verifiable, but under certain assumptions. People often like jump into the whole quantum computing debate at this point. They start saying, oh, uh, you know, we, we have to worry about whether... You know, they worry about something like confidential transactions based on the fact that it uses Pedersen commitments and Pedersen commitments rely on the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem. The elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem assumes there's no quantum computers and you know, they get into this kind of old technical debate. And I think people sort of fetishize too much to like these exact mathematical facts, whereas the real world is very messy. So it's to me, it's more that the, the concern is more like what's this gap that we have between our eyes that we can verify directly something and you know, these base level assumptions. And like in the case of that Zcash problem, it was it was simply a matter of just making a slight error in like writing out a transcript, like the one particular entry in a transcript that shouldn't have been written out, that was written out. It's, you know, it's just some weird thing that maybe like 50 people in the world know about or care about. And just because one of them happened to make a mistake, the whole system was like completely screwed. So I think, although intuitively, and, you know, Fluffy Pony's been making that argument for I don't know how many years, and, and all the people in his camp is like, if it's not baked into the base layer, it doesn't work. Um, you know, you can build... Uh, it's like that thing. You can you can build a censorship... resist. Uh, you can't build a censorship-resistant layer on top of a non-censorship-resistant layer. And I think they try to make the same argument with privacy, and I'm not really sure it's true. And, I, and I've also made the analogy that you made which is, you know, look at how it worked in the real world with uh, with the internet. It, we had TCIP. It was, you know, crappy in many ways. And one way it's crappy is it's completely plain text. Arguably, is it? I don't know. And then we built, you know, SSL version one on it. That was crap. But then they built SSL version two, and eventually they built TLS, and TLS was actually good enough to the point where we now have kind of reasonable, reasonable certainty of, of the basic operation of it. So it might seem like superficially this is the wrong thing to have a plain text base layer, but both from the point of view of scalability and also from the point of view of verifiability, there is an argument that says actually the base layer needs to be super, super simple. It's it's arguable. It's arguable. So you've asked like one of the biggest questions in, in Bitcoin and, and the whole of cryptocurrency. So I, if, excuse me for answering rather long. <laughs>